Melissa Lee's our host. I don't know if you're familiar. We're like sort of husband and wife, brother and sister. More brother and sister, um, but we have a lot of fun together. And we were talking about the gold market the other day, and I said, all right, check this out, Mel. I said, you own a car, okay? And you're selling your car, and you sell it to somebody for a price. And that person says to you, here's the money for the car, but I don't want ownership of it. You hold it for me. You keep it, I just want to know that that's my car. She says, great. And two days later, somebody comes to her and says, hey, you still selling that car? And she says, yeah. And he says, I'll buy that car, but I don't want ownership of it. You hold on to it for me. Just, I just want to know that it's my car. What's my point? Well, think about the gold market, right? And think about where the gold is. So in, 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 in our reserves here, there's all kinds of gold, but if you knew that you were gonna hold on to that gold, how many times would you sell it knowing that nobody's gonna take ownership of it? So how many, times, how many times would you lever those gold reserves? I think you're starting to see something in the gold market that's really fascinating. A few years ago, by the way, the Bundesbank came out and said, you know what, we have gold in Paris and we have gold in the United States. We want it back, we wanna repatriate our gold. Nobody really paid attention to it. It wasn't a big story. It was interesting to me because I knew what it represented. Everybody ever see the movie Hunt for Red October? <laughs> Sean Connery. There's a line, and Fred Thompson was in that movie. And he says something to Alec Baldwin, and I'll keep it a little bit clean. But he basically says to Alec Baldwin when talking about the Russians, they don't go to the bathroom in the morning without having a plan. And that's true with Germany as well. They didn't just wake up one morning and decide they wanted their gold back. They saw something, and they wanted to repatriate their gold. We said, well, why was their gold not on their borders in the first place? It's because you go back 100 years, and they were concerned that the Russians were going to come in and pillage them and take their reserves, so they put it elsewhere. Made sense. But unless you physically have it, is it really yours? Venezuela is learning that, you know what, although it's theirs, it ain't theirs. And that's a problem. And if you've seen over the last couple of weeks, you've had this slow, steady grind to the upside in the price of gold. Nothing all that interesting yet, but like I tell people, gold isn't a story until it's a story. So you have these overly accommodative central banks. Everybody's trying to devalue their currency because if your currency is cheaper than the next guys and gals, your goods are going to be more attractive. You have to ask yourself, how does that end well? Like, where does that all lead to? That's the question that I ask myself now. So it's fascinating for me, and again, that's why I think these markets are sort of built on sand, and that's why I think what you saw in October, November could happen again. I don't say it, I don't want it to happen again, but if you don't think it can happen, you're just not paying attention.